Anyway. Where were we? Funny video about him from a friend of the show. Nick is not green. Yeah, here. This is who I would get. Not Ben Shapiro. This is who I would rather get Name my Monty fucking commentary Lopez from. mean anything to you. Okay. That's great. Me neither. I'm a boomer, but this is not the girl whose entire career is stealing TikTok dances from black people. I mean, yes. It, yes, that is definitely a, a part of it. Okay. She is a bit of a culture vulture, but who isn't? You know what I mean? I feel like as far as like uh, getting upset about that does unironically strike me as like very fucking like it's just TikTok shit. Like getting upset about that is literally TikTok shit. Okay. The worst dad on TikTok. Wait, what? For a long oh, time I've moisted one too. Oh, dude. Okay, we got to respect Nick. Friend of the show. Nick is not green and see what is... So Addison Ray's dad, Monty Lopez, has been gaining a ton of traction on TikTok in the past month following some drama in his life. I know, this is what my channel has become. I am a TikTok drama channel now. And at first I actually wanted this video to be about Monty Lopez going up again. Culture bullshit, young stupid girl doing shit on TikTok and stealing anything KW? Yes, uh, every part of TikTok not Hassan minimizing culture vultures with a 0.04% black community. Yeah, exactly. No, it's just like, first of all, the entire point of TikTok is literally doing that. Okay. The entire point and purpose of TikTok is to do that to everyone all the time. It's literally, that is what TikTok is for. So you probably do not understand what TikTok is for if you're getting too upset over it. But it also does strike me as like, uh, it also does strike me as like very, like, otherwise marginal insignificant things that people are upset about that uh is everything for the lives of like 14 year olds because that's all they know and that's all they consume it's like when people get really mad about like twitch drama you know what i mean like motherfucker i'm a political commentator i'm talking about fucking i'm talking about fucking you know donald trump possibly getting arrested or some shit meanwhile you're like you know 14 year olds are losing their shit over uh addison ray uh doing a way worse version of the uh, of of like dances that uh, young black girls came up with, which to you know you should credit them and you should hype them up. I do agree, okay. But like, it's not the fucking worst thing on the planet. I'm sorry. Against Mark D'Amelio and seeing which TikTok dad is worse. But the more I read about Monty, the more I realized. I could fill an entire video with just him, but don't worry. We will circle back to Mark later. But first, let's meet this cast of quirky characters that makes up Monty's life. But before we do that, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed... Just That's fucked up to pretend she made it up. I, I don't think... Wait, what the fuck? I'm not... Sorry, Nick. I know you're in here right now. But here, see? Your call to action worked on me. Here. We're putting our mouses on top of one another. Just go down there and take two seconds to do it. First and foremost, we have Monty... What the fuck? I was just about to roast you for not being subscribed to me, but you are a subscriber. God damn it. Okay. Monty himself. And Everyone I go subscribe to Nick. Don't worry. This guy sounds like a Nickelodeon cartoon character that wears a little Indiana Jones hat and he fights reanimated skeletons in ancient tombs. That's what you were thinking, right? But no, Monty Lopez is the father of the insanely successful TikTok star Addison Ray, And he is 46 years old. You're going to want to remember that number. 46. Way too old it's to be on be TikTok. Don't do it. Story. Next up, we have Sherry Easterling, uh, Addison Ray's mom and Monty's wife. Now, Damn, Mon bro. She did a great... Sherry, you're probably not watching right now, but I'm just going to say short hair works wonderful on you, queen. Goddamn. I mean, seriously. T and Sherry had an on and off marriage over the course of the past 20 years. And although they're married right now, they are currently separated. And I also can't believe that I am saying these things in a video of mine. I feel kind of like an idiot right now. But I promise you this story is important. Guys, by the way, if you want more T-Channel uh, type commentary, that's what Nick is uh, doing here. And that's what he's famous for doing. Nick is Not Green is a TikTok T-Channel. For those of you who don't know, he is the... He, that's what he does. He does TikTok tea. He's a tea channel for uh, TikTokers. Um, yeah, nothing else. Just that for the most part. Exclusively doing TikTok tea channel.
important. It's more Tough. important than just like a weird dad. Now the other two minor players in this game, and they're not like actually minors, J just just so you know, that would make this story a lot worse. One of them is Renee Ash, who is a 25 year old influencer, and the other one is Young Gravy, who who is a rapper. Yeah, no, I don't get it either. T is like gossip. Before yes. we get into this, I need to make the disclaimer that I don't actually know any of these people. As surprising as that may be, I'm not kicking it with Monty every single day. Uh, and Addison and I, well, there was like a little bit of a falling out. We're all good though. We're on good terms. For the most part, I'm going to try to leave Addison out of this since this video is more about the creepier weird things her dad has done. And I don't think she should be criticized for the actions of her parents. Matter of fact, it must be terrifying to have this much drama about your father online. So... I don't envy her at all, and this video is not to make fun of her in any way. Hey, sorry, I just looked like I crawled out of a hole. This is gonna be gone after Monday night, but tonight Too is late. the last chance. Too late, we're skipping it. Renee Done, it's over. Wait, or oh, maybe it's not. Thank you to everyone who bought the hats. Back to the video. So basically, let's jump into the tea of it all, okay? In July of this year, Renee Ash, the 25 year old influencer, came out and said that she and Monty had a five month long relationship while well, Monty was still married to Sherry. Now, Renee said that Monty claimed he was in the process of getting divorced from Sherry, but his bio on Instagram still said that he was married to her. God, these are like grown ass adults. I don't know why I'm talking about this. Now, this whole situation is obviously very weird to me. The cheating, the age gap that is old enough to buy a beer, but the worst part is they look the same. For five months, Monty dated someone who looked very similar and was like way closer in age to his very successful and famous daughter. Oh shit, that's kind of true. I didn't even think about that. God damn. That's kind of weird. Except she's 25. All bets are off. No problematic age gap discourse. Not for me, pal. That's my fucking rule. 25, dude. She's 25 years old. Safe. Whatever the referee hand signal is for you cleared it. You, you cleared it. Now, when this relationship ended, Renee put out a series of stories that included text between her and Monty, where he talked about how much money they were going to make from his relationship with his daughter. Which Hope this brightens your day. Bro, how fucked up is your day that this brightens it? Bro, there's no timeline in which getting this extremely Italian sausage to send you a loose-fitting wife-beater tea in some random fucking bathroom brightens your day. Okay? No, it's worse. Bro, he's not Italian. Yes, he is. He's so Italian-coded. Shut the fuck up. You will never convince me that he's Mexican. Okay? Someone in the chat said he's Mexican. No shot. He's from Connecticut. This is an Italian man. This is the most Italian-coded motherfucker on the planet. You do not tell me he's not Italian. ...in Monty, where he talked about how much money they were going to make from his relationship with his daughter, which is absolutely disgusting, and I hate it, but we're going to touch on that later in this video. How now, come you know that Connecticut is an Italian place? What do you mean? I went to Rutgers, dude. What are you, what are you talking about? If you are from the tri-state area, you are Italian. It doesn't matter. The closer you go to Massachusetts, the more Irish you become. The closer you go to Chicago, the more Polish you become. That's how it works. How many times do I have to go through this, okay? There are only two genders, Italian and Mexican. The more you go to the Southwest, the, the closer you are to the Southern border, you're more Mexican. The closer you are to the tri-state area where Italians congregate, you're Italian. That's how it works. I don't make these rules except for that one. I did make up that rule and it's true. Italians also kind of congregate towards Chicago, but they're like Polish Italians. Since Renee came forward about her relationship with Monty, a ton of other people have come forward sharing videos of Monty hitting on a 19 year old at a club. That's and weird. Flirting over face That's weird as fuck. Not cleared. Not allowed. No, sir. You're 46 years old. Take your fucking 46 year old ass home, dude. 19 years old. Not clear. Problematic age gap, age gap discourse unlocked. Okay. 
this time with another 19 year old girl. And I know exactly what you're thinking. Where does young gravy fit into all of this? That's probably not what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, what a creep. I hate this guy. This is disgusting. But were you also wondering where young gravy fits into all of this? Because I'm here to help you out with that. So from what I can gather, this all started in late July following Renee and Monty's affair. On July 21st, young gravy posted a TikTok saying that he's coming back to America and he's ready to, in his words, make some whoopee and butter the biscuits. I'm gonna butter the biscuits. Guys, I cannot tell you how, how little I care about Gorbachev dying, okay? I don't know why you guys are like coming in here freaking the fuck out. Like, I, I literally do not care. Uh, yeah, I, okay, he's dead. Oh, oh okay, uh, pour one out, okay? Like, I don't give a shit, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Plant the parsnip, bake the potato, do a little horizontal hokey pokey. Now, I could probably talk about Young Gravy using the term make some whoopee for the rest of this video, but that's like not even the ninth craziest thing to happen in this whole entire situation. So a few days later, Addison's mom, Sherry, stitched Young Gravy's video and did this. Make some whoopee, you feel me? I'm trying to butter the biscuit. damn she is a babe dude i mean respect by the way also incredibly connecticut house like i am i'm lasered when it comes to this shit okay this is the most italian connecticut home you could see look at the fucking countertops dude look at the fucking ugly ass light back there this is a staple in every mamma mia house you've ever been to okay this has the most extreme, extreme tri-state energy permeating through every fucking orifice. Holy shit. Guys, this is, this is horny on Maine. Like horny on Maine to the 11th degree. This is like what we're trying to avoid. Why are we enabling this behavior with a grown woman? Do you see how fast and how aggressively she grabbed those biscuits off the shelf? She is in a rush. She's horny. Then, just two days after that, Tana Manjo and Young Gravy made a TikTok together and Sherry stitched that TikTok. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. I Bro, do they're doing, this is doing TikTok good, right? Like you're doing good TikToking at this point. God, this is such a platform that is an enigma to me, okay? Might as well be a ligma to me, if we're being real. Sent a Discord message in case you ever check those. I'm rolling the dice. Fuck it. No. The answer is no. I do think that this is kind of funny, okay? Just because of how absurd it is for her to bake that many biscuits and then follow through like days later. So she either still had the biscuits that she cooked from days before, or she cooked a whole nother batch just to toss it in the trash can for the TikTok. Either way, it's funnier than what Monty's doing. And I'll give her- Yeah, she's a good poster. She is a good poster. Respect. Respect to Addison Ray's mom. Definitely has a, a better posting skill than, uh, than the dad does. The dad is just like being the most- Italian, the most divorced dad in the United States of America. Ops for just leaning into the bit, I guess. Now, I definitely find it a little icky that Sherry is capitalizing so hard on this Young Gravy crush, especially given their 16 year age gap. But Young Gravy was going along with it, and he even said that they were going on a date soon, so it all seemed pretty lighthearted, for the most part, at least, because a week or two later, Monty made a TikTok asking Young Gravy to box him. Well, let's take a look at that. Appreciate all the likes. I'm even gonna give a shout out to Young Gravy's fans. But Young Gravy needs to watch running his mouth talking about all those MILFs out there, because all those MILFs got some daddies. Okay, yeah, go, go ahead. Tell me, tell me this is not the most Italian man. Go ahead, tell a lie. Oh, his last name is Lopez. This is the most Italian man. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? What is he? Is he at the fucking play pit of a Chuck E. Cheese? What, where is he fucking signing off from? What is happening right now? You guys are horny as hell if you think 16 years isn't a lot. Date people your age, you freaks. 
Nick is not green. He's, of course, a Zoomer, if you couldn't tell. Uh, he's also a T-Channel guy. Uh, so, of course, he probably also participates in the most Zoomer, the number one, the number one Zoomer uh, uh, conversation, which is a problematic age gap. Problematic age gap discourse gets Zoomers going, okay? Men have some baby dads. It's weird. It's weird that he's uh, going after women on TikTok that look exactly like his daughter and are super close to his daughter's age. No one's going to say that it's uh, not weird. It certainly is weird. But, you know, there's no grooming or anything happening in that situation, in my opinion. It's in those baby daddies, some of them are equally as bad as me. Some of them are badder. Some of them can't come close. So watch your mouth when you're slapping your gums, bro. What I'm really worried about is my two boys going to school and getting picked on because Young Gravy wants to hook up with their mama. What I want them to do is go to school and get praised because Young Gravy's about... Weird how hard you have to defend it, though, because it's dumb as fuck. It makes people look ridiculous, dude. It also completely robs people of, like, any sort of autonomy whatsoever. Whenever motherfuckers do that, whenever they talk about, like, someone who's over the age of 25, like, a girl that's over the age of 20... A woman that's over the age of 25, and it's, like, oh, problematic age gap. Problematic age gap discourse uh, time. It's, like... Someone's like fucking 25 years old and they're dating like an 80 year old man. That woman knows what she's doing. Shut the fuck up. Okay. Let her get the bag. What's wrong with you? Why do you got to turn it into something weird? Let her get the fucking bag. She knows what she's doing. Stop infantilizing adults, dude. Obviously, this doesn't mean that there isn't like, uh, you know, additional underlying circumstances. You know, coercion, of course, exists in every facet of people's lives. Obviously, I'm not talking about like a fucking manager worker kind of situation. OK, but you're crazy. <sighs> to get knocked down in the boxing ring by the daddy. So be watching yourself, man. Watch what you say, bro. You ain't no rapper, man. Clean that up, man. You a singer. Go clean your bio up, bro. You ain't no rapper. You a fake Bro, you are literally 700 years old. So do you have a full hour? Stop it. You stop that shit right now. This is a good video, by the way. You stop it. What do you mean? You ain't no rapper, man. You're a singer. Oh, my God. Rapper. Peace. Now, right out the gate, I have so many things I have to say about this video, okay? First off, if I was Mr. Gravy, I would be 100 feet deep in my underground bunker because there is nothing more intimidating and off-putting than the backdrop of this video. You've got the vector from Despicable Me Tapestry, the Chuck E. Cheese carpet he Just taped because it seems weird to you doesn't always mean it's always problematic. No, I, I, I already am saying that. I think it's weird as fuck, okay? It's weird as fuck, but it's not fucking grooming, okay? You're not exploiting or grooming someone who is a consenting adult and a full-fledged one at that, okay? We're not even talking like, ooh, count down the time until she's 18 years old. We're talking about a 25-year-old, dude. Nah, the Sherry Young Gravy shit sucks. The only reason she's famous is her daughter, and this is just her embarrassing her for clout, but the gap doesn't really matter. I know Gorbachev is dead. Please stop saying this. I know. I mean, good for Young Gravy, though. You know, he's getting the bag and also bagging a baddie. But yeah, it is embarrassing for Addison, for sure. The wall, the squishmallows that are that are surrounding him. I mean, I'm shaking in my little boots over here, and I'm not even young gravy. But seriously, I don't know whose room he's shooting in, but it's like very bizarre that he decided to shoot his call-out video from this room. And it definitely mirrors the level of maturity that Monty is displaying towards a 26-year-old rapper named Young Gravy. But I mean, for all we know, this could just be Monty's new girlfriend's room. Now, Monty goes on to say that his sons are being bullied because a fake rapper- Chat is 50 USSR News TikTok to you right now, I know. Wants to have sex with their mom. Now, I'm sure he's right about this because his son's bullies have homeroom with Monty's girlfriend. So I'm sure that he's hearing about it firsthand. And in general, I just find it really odd for a grown man to rope his children into this drama to like win some sort of sympathy. And honestly, it's just kind of sad to me to see Monty use his own daughter as a crutch so more people can know who he is and so he can be more famous. And I see Sherry doing the same thing and I don't like it, but it's way more subtle when she does it. But the craziest thing that he does in this video is obviously- and more yeah. importantly, Sherry's making content and also is kind of sexy. So respect to Sherry. No respect to the dad, though.
challenging young gravy. Listen, chatters who keep saying Gorbachev is dead. Unless Gorbachev died from having a fucking insane erection after trying to fuck Addison Ray's mom, okay? I do not care about it at this moment. We will get to it later, okay? Did he die because he wanted to fuck Addison Ray's mom and then all of a sudden the boner killed him? No? Then I don't care! to a boxing match and i kind of love how tiktok boxing matches have become the norm for two people to settle any sort of conflict they have over themselves because 90 percent of the time they don't even happen because funny enough there are a lot of legal hoops you have to jump through in order to publicly air a physical fight between two people and i don't really think monty has the event planning skills to put on the next creator clash and this whole thing with Monty calling out young gravy on TikTok is like the equivalent of some old man running onto his porch to yell, why I oughta at the local neighborhood kids. But in this case, the neighborhood kids want to have sex with your wife. Now, Young Gravy actually responded to this challenge with a message of his own. Shout out to Young Gravy fans. You really Young Gravy? Do I ever love my fans, baby? Man, I've, I've seen at least 40 people with my signature tattooed on them. It's been a while since I've seen someone with this much dedication, you know, this much time on their hands to, to get my attention and show love and... Young Gravy clearly shuts down the idea and just like brushes off Monty as a fan, which is I think the best thing you could do in that situation. Now any normal person would let shame kick in and take a step back for the sake of themselves and their entire family that's online, but... I don't know if you remember, but Monty is not a normal person. He goes on to make yet another video where he looks like he blew too much air into his anchor arms, but before they exploded, he challenges young Gravy to another fight. This time, Gravy's response was a little bit more firm and direct, saying that he's not gonna fight Monty over TikTok drama, and that he acts half Addison's age and embarrasses his whole family because of it. Yeah, one of the most- Oh my God, bro, literally Papa John. Oh my God, that's such a good lock, dude. You are so right. Right. He does. He he does look like uh, Papa John. Successful daughters in the world, and you decide to act half her age to try to get some attention while embarrassing your whole family. So I finished making this video when I saw something I oh, had. Tell me that's not Papa. Tell me that's not Papa John. That is literally Papa John. He is so Papa John right now. He's probably saying the N word in that clip. Okay, that's how fucking Papa John he is in this clip to include he is so papa coded yes he is so italian coded he's so papa coded he is just he is papa a couple weeks ago monty was actually on the hollywood fix giving his input on the young gravy boxing match now i've heard the smaller celebrities sometimes pay people like the hollywood fix to show up and be a paparazzi for them so they can look like they have clout and i have no doubt that this is what monty did here how else would this 40 year old blogger find out where addison ray's dad was eating dinner and also why would he care monty comes out of the restaurant with an entourage of people that are half his age and of course he immediately addresses the paparazzi because he was the one that asked them to be there hey Hey, what do you think about Young Gravy uh, talking to Sherry Nicole, Monty? I'm Look, I got something for Young Gravy. Bro, literally no one would ask that question. Even the guy, the guy flubbed it too. He didn't even do a good job. He didn't ask it casually. He was like reading a fucking, he's like, all right, this is what I got to ask. Uh, okay, got it. Uh, what do you think about uh, Young Gravy, uh, Addison Ray, uh, Monty, uh... Baby, man, he likes to talk a lot of smack and he's talking trash. Monty then embarrasses himself with the most out of touch trash talking I've ever seen, making a joke out of himself in front of all the teenagers that he paid to be there. Especially this one. She was laughing a little bit too hard at Monty's jokes. Let's get it as a ring. Let's get in the ring and set some of it like men. Look, you like apples? How you like them apples? Oh, wow. come on. Talking a lot of shit, Nick, for a guy. Who got upset last time I watched one of your videos uh, three seconds in and then immediately clicked away to watch another person's video on the same subject, okay? I'm giving you the respect and the due diligence this time. And you're out here talking shit on Twitter. The fuck is this? I even clicked on, the funniest thing is I even clicked on the Moist Critical video and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do that to Nick again. Because I had done this before. I had done this to him before. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to watch his video. Oh, come on, little gravy. Hey, Open you... your mouth so I can shut it. Are you serious, Monty? You get in the ring with him? 
You know I will. The paparazzi quickly realizes that there isn't much else to ask Monty, so he asks him about Young Gravy like way too many times. Hey, what do you think about Young Gravy? That tweet is going to leave its target audience? Oh, 100%. 100%. That's going to be like, Hassan focus suck. If you fight Young Gravy, if you fight Young Gravy, uh, hey man, do you have a message for Young Gravy? How do you feel about uh, Young Gravy? Any message for Young Gravy? And then this 40-year-old blogger, you Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, that made it so much worse. Oh, dude. Sometimes it's best not to know. It's best not to know. This is one of those instances. This made the situation chaotic. Okay? Oh, my God. This is Mr. Beast if he didn't pop off. Okay? Holy fuck. Oh, no, dude. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. He's got the gray undershirt and the gray polo to match. Oh, no, dude. You know, Fletcher Green Mr. of the Yeast. Hollywood Fix follows Monty to his next location and asks him about his 21-year-old daughter's swimsuit controversy, which I don't know a lot about, but it seems really important to this 40-year-old man named Fletcher Green. What do you think about this Addison swimsuit controversy, man? Hey, did you hear Christina? Oh, they're at Doheny Room. Nice. Hey Monty, any comment on Addison's swimsuit controversy? Do you think that the swimsuit was disrespectful, Monty? There's this other Hollywood Fix video from two weeks ago where Monty comes out of the car with a girl who's almost 20 years younger than him, and he spends the whole video saying that Young Gravy is a singer and not a rap. Bro, look at that shirt. Look at that fucking shirt. Oh my god, the, the aura that this man has. Oh my god, dude. Oh my fucking god. This is like, this is tap out for motherfuckers who are like, I still, like, they don't sell it anymore. I go to the, every, I went to every Ross Dress for Less to buy out the rest of the remaining tap out affliction stock, and I could not find it, which is why I went and got the designer version. This is literally the, this is. This is for guys who want to dress like a fucking energy drink, okay? And not like, like a monster energy can. <laughs> this is the most PUA coded fucking uh, the fit that I've seen. This is Ed Hardy in 2022, 100%. He looks like half the guys he went to Rutgers with. Oh, yeah. Rapper while walking way too far in front of the people that he's with before he just walks into an empty bar. He just becomes more divorced every time I see this man. Every time I see this man, he looks more divorced than the last time I saw him. How is that even possible? This is the this the entire Republican platform hinges on these guys remembering to go out and vote, okay? Taking the day off from their HVAC business and, and actually going out to vote. If these guys don't come out to vote, the Republican Party's cooked in the midterms. I wouldn't say he's, a, he's not a rapper. I mean, I would say he's not a rapper. He's a singer. Good music, I guess, if you're into that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, he ain't got no street credit. And as much as I need to escape from this paparazzi channel ran by this 40-year-old man whose name is Fletcher Green, I have to address his Hollywood Fix video from months ago where he brags about buying a house in the metaverse and then burning it down in celebration of his daughter signing a movie deal. Did you guys do anything to celebrate? Man, actually, I bought a house in the metaverse. First. I bought an ocean mansion. No, hey, oddly, I burned it down the same day. You bought what kind of mansion? The ocean man, ocean man, house mansion. Bro, oh, you are literally on the lowest rung of TikTok clout, by the way. If you're hanging out with a 46 year old divorced dad of Addison Ray, you are literally like, what are you doing, dude? Choose a different lane. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, like this guy is like a mess, okay? But what about the guy next to the guy? Okay, you got to think about the 25 year old who's like, yeah, I'm really going to hit it big. Once I get a crumb of that fucking Addison Ray dad clout, dude, shit is going to be so different for me. God damn, dude, fucking. <laughs> uh, it's giving bringing the car seat all the way to the top notch. <laughs> yes, he does have to do that.
House Mansion. Man. What's that, an NFT? It's, uh, yeah, it's an NFT. And he also takes shots at Soldier Boy for burning down the first house in the metaverse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah metaverse. who burns a house in the metaverse? Hey, There's a demon back there. Backseat demon. What is happening? His eyes are on fire. I'll tell you what. Tell that man so just looks like an NFT. He looks like an NFT, but in real life. Tell Soldier Boy, I burnt the first house in the metaverse. I didn't really know that about Soldier. He's such a low list celebrity motherfucker and e lister. No, it's awesome. It's great. It's just, it, I love this. This is awesome. Soldier Boy, I don't keep up with him, but I don't really think he's going to see this message from Monty because not only is Monty significantly less famous than him, but he only pulls 12,000 views on Hollywood Fix, which is a channel that has over 2 million subscribers. So I just don't know how relevant he really is. He also did this interview with this podcast, but I'm just not going to go through all of that right now. I think I'm going to watch it on stream after this video is uploaded and it should be up on the second channel sometime next week. But let's Let's get back to the video. Yeah, TikTok now, plug. How is it that the two youngest are, people I mean, in this uh, situation, plug. Young Gravy and Addison Ray, are acting more mature than two people in their 40s? Well, personally, I think Young Gravy hit the nail on the head when he said that Monty was just doing this all for. Now, this whole situation with Monty Lopez points to the larger issue of parents extorting their child's fame to their advantage or it's just pointing to the fact that they have no interest in protecting their children from predators since they can be predatory themselves. Now, Sherry and Monty had Addison pretty young in their lives, so to me, this just seems like this desperate attempt to cling to their youth, but in the process, they've kind of just humiliated- I don't know, I'm team Sherry, I'm not gonna lie. It's good, it's good that she's out there living her best life, getting dicked down by young gravy, good for her. I, I, I do have a lot more sympathy for her, even after all this, especially because, like, one, she's hot. She is a babe. Two, especially with the short hair. Goddamn, she looks great. Uh, two, she is... Um, she, she just makes better content, it seems like. Like, the other dude is, like, very clearly... Uh, the other dude, the, the dad, whatever the fuck his name... I can't even remember his name. I've literally watched the video... I've watched an entire video dedicated to him. That's how forgettable he is. But, um... Doesn't deserve half the shelf forever. Blow the doors off that queen. I'm just saying, yeah, Papa John it was, was a big L. Big L for her. Sherry's on her fucking divorce arc. She's looking great. She's working out. Good for her. Why, as a multimillionaire, do you look like the 2000s berries and cream Skittles commercial? I have no idea what that reference is. I wasn't in the country when that uh, ran. I was in Turkey. But I'll tell you why I look the way I do. Uh, because I can't. That's the answer. Just, it's awesome. Because I'm a fucking Twitch streamer their daughter and the rest of their family in front of the entire world now don't get me wrong monty is absolutely more in the wrong in this situation than sherry i mean he cheated on her he flirted and dated girls that were way too young for him and he tried to fight a oh my god nick you are a t channel brother look at the, all the details look at look at this man he is spilling this is spilling the tea okay he's like <laughs> He knows the de he knows way too much about this particular subject. Okay, <laughs> this is you're never beating the T channel allegations, Nick. This is this is a T channel. Berries and cream. You tried these berries and cream starburst? Pardon me. What kind of starburst did you just say? Uh, berries and, and berries. Berries and what else? And cream. Berries and cream. Oh, he meant like my hair. I was like, what is oh, he talking about? Berries and cream, berries and cream. I'm a little lad who loves berries and cream. Berries and cream, berries and cream. Oh, I'm a little lad who loves berries and cream. Yeah, I'll take it. I deserve it. You deserve the top of the hour ad break, though. Unless you subscribe. At the top of the hour, there's a six second ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free. The Twitch Prime. Yeah, Twitch Prime is free. Yeah, if I got the if I got those bangs, I would look the same. That's true. Um, 
You can also get gifted a sub if you're like, that's so disrespectful that you don't know his name, Hassan. It's Addison Ray's dad, dude. You keep forgetting it. <laughs> Luna Lux 10, thank you for allowing. Luna Lux 9, thank you for allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads. At the top of the hour, here's the one minute ad break. Now, boom, blammo. Don't you make more from ads? No, I do not. Okay, let's get back to this T channel that we were watching. A rapper over his almost ex-wife. He even texted his ex girlfriend or G Vebs, thank you for the five get the subs. Whatever, and said that they were gonna make a shit ton of money off of the fact that Addison is his daughter, which is not only shitty and scummy, but it's also extremely sad. Now to have your own parents talk about your fame and success behind your back in a way that feels entitled and exploitative is beyond I could cancel you. This is literally you. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Uh, also, uh, I could cancel you. Get in line, motherfucker. What do you mean? Saying you could cancel me is like, is like the most, yeah, ev anyone can. And people often do. Oftentimes on accident. Wrong. And I can't imagine being in a position where your parents aren't really supporting your career, but doing everything they can to make it about them so they can reap the benefits from it. But that's not to say that Sherry Get, isn't also- You can cancel me. Get in line. Get in line with the rest of my community of fans who uh, sometimes will uh, tweet some shit jokingly and then people will take it seriously and uh, spark a random cancellation wave. taking advantage of Addison's fame as well. Now, in comparison to Monty, it might not seem like much, but this behavior from parents of influencers to include themselves in the mix so they can become influencers is gross and it's weird. Now, I don't know where the norm or the idea came from that these parents are like invited to the party, but I think we should start being more ageist and get these losers out of it. <gasps> Who's How dare you, you ageist motherfucker, dude. <sighs> Oh, I'm sorry. Not everyone, not everyone's a fucking young Zoomer anymore, okay? With me. But to be serious, I do feel really bad for Addison. Typical and Zoomer! To see their parents lampooned on a daily basis or even come under fire themselves for things that their parents did. Addison Rae doesn't even follow either of her parents on Instagram anymore, and I don't blame her. Now, there's definitely something to be said about the fact that Addison and other TikTok stars like the D'Amelios were basically children when they became- Dude, that's so weird. Can you imagine, like, you grow up with your fucking family, you grow up with your parents, okay? And then your parents that you, like, basically looked up to your entire life because you didn't know any better, become these, like, cloud-obsessed media demons that are running off of your success and trying to make a name for themselves while simultaneously regularly throwing you under the bus, like, making you look bad. So much so that you have to literally unfollow them. You're like, this is so embarrassing. This is so fucked up. It's crazy. It is actually a literal nightmare. I cannot imagine if my family members tried to fucking do like, if they tried to be on social media, it would be awful. Okay. They wouldn't do it anyway, but God damn famous and their parents now get to live out their teenage fantasies through their daughters and you can definitely see that with addison's mom as well even if it's not in the same predatory way that her dad is doing it now a parent who is genuinely interested in protecting their child would make sure their privacy is valued instead of I don't know, uh, signing the entire family up for a keeping up with the Kardashians ripoff that profits off the mental breakdown of one of their own children. And although Mark and Heidi D'Amelio aren't making a spectacle of themselves the same way that Addison's parents are, they are still grossly benefiting from the rapid success of their daughters. And this isn't really what this video is about, but I try to point out when I can that in 2014, Mark D'Amelio got a DUI because he was driving drunk with Charlie D'Amelio, who was nine years old at the time, in the front seat and he went to a bodega and picked up three wait wait hold up oh this is too far listen making fun okay hold on hold on making fun of an italian man being ageist fine i draw the line at making fun of drunk driving 
the bravest individuals in America, okay? The bravest individuals in America are the ones still keep up the antiquated tradition of drunk driving. Do you understand? Ancient tradition. That's crazy. How dare you? These guys are so brave. Wait, what is this? Not sure when I became a white guy. I grew up an Italian boy from New York with the last name D'Amelio living in Connecticut. I always felt inadequate. We all have a story that our skin color may not tell. <gasps> oh. Oh, that's such a good fucking... That's such a fire... Dude, one of my favorite things on the fucking planet is like uh, just, uh, you know, Italian people saying that they're not white and taking POC cred. It is straight up the best. Normalize Italian X racism? Wow. Wow. I will not stand for this. My grandpa used to call his beard beer road sodies. His answers were gladiators drunk charioteering. Um, for those of you who are going to inevitably ask, I am having bison, ground bison, okay, with bonzo pasta, I think. It's like chickpea pasta, and it's pretty fucking fire. Very high protein, the bonzo pasta. Very high protein, And, um, here, I'll give you the fucking macronutrients real quick. Cause I know you motherfuckers are going to ask regardless. Okay. I clocked earlier. This entire meal is 660 calories. Okay. It's 74 grams of protein. Bonza spaghetti made from chickpeas. And 95%, oh, it's venison, sorry. 95% lean, grass-fed, ground venison. 5% fat, 95% uh, not fat. And it's got 74 grams of protein, and it is 660 calories total. Now, I thought it was ground bison, but I ordered it wrong. I was wondering, when we eat ground meat, do you think it's one animal ground up or just a whole bunch of different animals mixed together? No, it's literally, it's, it will say it. I'm sorry, buddy, that's a papa bowl. No, it's not. I've had that pasta. It's great and not carved up. Yes, the pasta is really good. Bonza pasta is, has really good macros for pasta. Wait, Bambi? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. What is that hand placement? Oh my god. You are a T channel. Nick, look at this. Covering Mark D'Amelio's congressional run. Three strangers and put them in the backseat of his car and drove drunk with all of them in the car. And he also thinks that he's not white because he's Italian, which is interesting. But let's get back to the exploitation of their children. I mean, Heidi and Charlie are about to compete against each other on Dancing with the Stars. Why is her mom on the show? I don't know. And it is clear to me that fame and greed has clouded these parents' better judgment, leading to even more undeserved public ridicule of their very young daughters. Recently, there's been a lot of conversation online about Jeanette McCurdy's new book, which opened up a lot of discourse around child stars. And it's really interesting seeing this whole Monty Lopez scenario play out through that lens. Now, Addison and Charlie and Dixie aren't kids anymore, but I do think that enforcing some sort of child labor laws when it comes to social media would prevent parents from extorting their children's status for fame. It's bizarre to me that the parents of kids like Ryan Toy Reviews are able to raise their child online and work him as many hours as they want, but when you go to network TV, they actually have laws in place that prevent that from happening. But it's very obvious that platforms like TikTok or YouTube don't make an effort to make sure that kids aren't being exploited online by their parents. So basically what I'm trying to say is that I'm challenging every social media app to a boxing match until they enforce some sort of child labor laws to help kids not be exploited by their parents online. Good luck. 
Oh, yeah, right. I'm challenging every social media app to a boxing match until they enforce some child labor laws on it. Hey, thank you for watching this video. On the screen, you should see two other videos that I think you should check out. Make sure you comment, subscribe, like, and do all that other stuff that helps my videos do well. And I want to give a good shit. Good shit. We will talk about Young Gravy kissing Addison's mom and watch Monty's podcast interview on stream today. Why have I fallen into the TikTok drama? This is embarrassing. Because you're a TikTok T channel. It is what it is. But yeah, great video from Nick. Finished a Nick video? I did. I did it. I, I finished a whole one. I finished.